I would like to talk about the severe tricuspid regurgitation. Um, the tricuspid valve has for a long term, long time been named the forgotten valve, but due to the increase of use of um, transcatheter valve technologies and transcatheter technologies in structural heart disease, um, we have seen an increase in interest in this so-called forgotten valve. Why is it so interesting? We have a large population of patients due to functional TR, either after left heart surgery, mainly valve surgery, or after uh, pacemaker implantation or functional um, right heart failure, um, who are not treatable in another fashion. They can only be treated in a medical way, so they can be treated with diuretics, they can be treated with certain um, um, therapies, but there has been no sufficient therapy to really relieve the symptoms in the last years. Surgical option in these patients is not a very good one. The mortality is really high because, as I mentioned before, those patients tend to have a pre-operation already in the heart on the left side. They are severely ill. They mainly suffer from kidney failure. They have ascites, they have um, peripheral edema, and they have um, highly elevated liver enzymes. So they are not the kind of patient you really want to treat surgically. So there, if we look at the tricuspid valve, then we might understand why it is so difficult to treat the tricuspid valve. First of all, it's a multiplanar valve, so it's not in one plane. Um, the, the, the cusps, the leaflets, in contrary to the mitral valve, are rather small. They are rather, they, they differ a lot in their anatomy. And because of the dilatation of the annulus, you will see that the co-optation of the leaflets is quite big. I might want to show this in a short video. Here you see the typical anatomy with a huge right ventricle. And if you look here at the leaflets, you can easily appreciate that the co-optation is not closing, it's quite big. And this, of course, causes a major problem when treating this valve. If we look at the different possibilities of addressing the valve, we can uh, differentiate either in treating the annulus, we can treat the leaflets, we can try to um, decrease the co-optation and by this um, decreasing the tricuspid regurgitation itself. Or another option is to put um, self-expandable valves in the vena cava superior and inferior, the so-called cavi treatment. If I might um, go through the different options, we, I would like to start with the co-optation treatment, which has been very successfully already started on the left side, mainly the mitral clip, but other technologies are also there to come. If we transfer this to the right side, we are um, having a problem with the co-optation because, as I showed, the leaflets are not getting close to each other, and you can imagine that it's getting quite difficult to catch and to grasp, to grasp the cusps with um, a device. Nevertheless, it has been done successfully. We know that if, the su if it succeeds, then the success rates are quite high. Um, we might need more than one um, mitral clip, or in this case, triclip. It has been modified a bit by the company. Um, but this really depends on the anatomy of the patient. Another um, attempt is to decrease the circumfer uh, circumference of the annulus, which means that a band, in this case it's mainly the cardio band that has been used, but other technologies are also on their way, will be anchored in the annulus. And finally, the annulus will be decreased in its dimension by closing the cardio band and by, in this way, trying to um, bring the valve dimensions back to a rather normal shape and, and dimension. Also this of course has its limitation. First we had to learn that the annulus of the tricuspid valve is much bigger than the mitral valve. And on the other hand we also saw that the right coronary artery is of course in a very close proximity to the annulus. The third solution is to put um, two um, self-expandable stents 
and um, valves, self-expandable valves in the vena cava inferior and superior. And this is a model from a right heart as it has been printed. So these valves will be put there in order to um, not touch the native valve and they will stop the backflow into the cabal system and by this will help to um, recompensate the patient without touching the native valve. If we look at the advantages of this trick valve system, then this can be placed even if a pacemaker is, um, is there, which is a main limitation to many other technologies, but the pacemaker is uh, in a high number of patients present, I would say in 75% of the patients that are target for this kind of therapy, we will have a pacemaker lead in situ. Yeah? So in general, um, all of these technologies are in an early stage. We are having the first clinical trials. I think the, the biggest um, question for the future or the biggest adventure will be to find out which therapy is optimal for which patient cohort. We will have to see when in the course of the disease we should optimally start treatment. There are new data suggesting that we should start quite early in the course of disease because of course the patients that are treated now are patients with a long history of right heart um, failure. So those are severely ill patients which of course make it more difficult to establish the question of prognosis. We know that we can relieve symptoms. I think this we have already learned. But I think now the main question will be which patient to benefit, when do they benefit, and when we should intervene in the course of the disease.